Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. So today, okay, I would like to continue our chapter 7. Actually, I miss uh, one uh, topic within computational paradigm and the chapter 7. So this video is a continuation of the chapter 7, uh, which is under, under the topic of sequential circuit. Okay, so sequential circuit is basically an uh, expansion of the digital logic where it involves mostly uh, related to our construction of uh, CPU and also our construction of the most complicated component, uh, most of the complicated components inside the computer. So what are the sequential circuit used for? They are used for uh, creating the processor and especially in developing most of the registers in ALU as well. So, however, ALU mostly we covered in our chapter Digital Logic where we involve adder, compressor, co uh, no compressor, comparator, subtractor, div divider, multiplexer. So, all of those are things that are under the ALU. However, there are things that I didn't cover before, which is how do we construct a register using digital circuit and how do processor uh, control the movement of data using a digital circuit. So today I will cover that in this video. So basically, okay, if you look at combinational circuits, okay, current flow in at one end and out of the other, basically, means that data coming in and data will go out. So combinational circuits, they cannot retain the values, means it cannot uh, uh, store the data inside it. So if we want to build a kind of memory, we need to use what we call here sequential circuit. So in a sequential circuit, current flows into the circuit and stays there. So means that if your data coming in and data will remain there and when it, we request the data, data will go out. Okay, so this is done by looping the output back into the input. Okay, if we link the output back to the input, it will remain the data there. So, sequential circuit, usually they will be used to implement the one bit storage. So, one sequential circuit, they can only store one. So, if you need a 64 bit, like for example, you need to have a combination of 64 uh, sequential circuit to form a 64 bit memory. So if you imagine if you have one, uh, two gigabytes of RAM, okay, how many, how big is your sequential circuit will be? So we can combine one bit storage circuit into group for n bit storage. Okay, so this is where we have the register and catch. Okay, so those circuits will be known as flip flops because they can flip from one state and to the other. So that's why we call them flip flop. So they can flip from one to zero or zero to one. So the most important component inside our computer related to the uh, computational circuits, a sequential circuit is the clock. Okay, without the clock, there will be no computer. So the clock will control when certain action should take place. So the clock is exactly a clock where it ticks and talks. So clock works like a, uh, a normal clock where it tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk. However, they move at an extreme speed so that for every ticks and talks, there will be something happening inside your CPU, okay? So, if you look at here, okay, when the line is high, high is, we, we, we define it as at the top, it means that current is flowing, and when low, it means current is not flowing. So, if we want to control when to shift, we connect, okay, we connect the S input to an N gate, that includes the clock as another input. So, if the clock is here, and there's another input here, the output will be generated when the clocks reach high, okay? Uh, so we will use the clock to control a number of things inside the CPU, such as flip-flop change of states, or when the ALU component should perform their operation, okay? So there are four states from the clock that we can utilize for uh, anything that we want to do inside a computer, which is either it's a rising age, falling age, high or low. Any of them is fine. So this example of a flip-flop, okay, this is what we call an SR flip-flop. 
okay so here is the clock coming in c is where we have the clock so what happened to this flip-flop is that when the state of s and r is either of this and the clocks remain high okay there will something happen to the q and this is a q bar opposite of q okay so when for example in this case when the clock is high and s equals zero r equals zero q will not change okay when the clock is high s equals zero i uh, r equal one you will reset to zero and this will become one if it's one and zero it will set to one and this will become zero if it's one and one is undefined and then in case you want to store a data inside here okay the cpu will uh, on certain clock will set it into a certain number like for example one zero okay and it become one and then it will remain zero 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 most of the next clock until you you change it again okay so while this one is zero and zero if before this it is set to one it will remain one all the time inside this flip-flop okay this is special things about flip-flop okay so basically the flip-flop is created by two NAND gate okay so two NAND gate so here you see that one of the input is and output is entering another gate and so this happened vice versa as well okay and we have another version, other version as well, which is D and J K flip flops. Okay, so D and J K flip flops also uh, they they create the same function as what we have in the S R flip flop. Okay, so this is the another variation, and you can see this is the truth table, and this is another truth table for J K flip flop. Okay, and for register. Okay, when you have a single flip-flop store a single bit okay we can combine a number of them to create a n bit register so you see that one sk uh, sr flip-flop can also so you can see that this sr flip-flop can store one bit of data so if you combine 64 of them you can store 64 bit okay 64 bits it's already how many bytes so it's already 16 bytes okay and 64 bit is 8 bytes okay okay since a single flip-flop okay you can come uh, okay uh, i'm sorry listen however in case the sr flip-flop can be set or reset at any time we instead want to use the system clock to determine when to change the value okay so system clock is the one that define when to change the value so we will use a d flop instead Okay, in the D flip flop, there are two input lines, but they represent different things than the SR flip flop. Okay, if you look at D flip flop here, two input lines. So one input is the clock. The e flip flop can only change when the clock pulses. You see that this one is clock, and the flip flop will change when the clock pulses. Okay, in case D is zero, Q will remain zero. In case D is one, Q is one. So clock is what decide what the input will be so the other input label as d is the input okay when if zero then the flip-flop will store zero if one the flip-flop will store one so basically like this so in this case we have a d flip-flop and you see that we have this is a clock line and this is the input of the data okay so here is a 4-bit register triggered by the system clock and connected to an input bus and an output bus okay you see that this register so this one in input this one is output okay this one is the input the left side is the input the right side is the output okay so you see that when the clocks come in data will be stored according to what the input inserted in and then you have here is the clock coming in and here is the enable input and enable output okay this one in this case is an 8-bit register with a single IO bus so other than that we have shift and rotate register so shift circuit okay uh, we saw earlier is a difficult to trace through although efficient in terms of hardware we can also build a special kind of register called a shift register or a rotate register by connecting SR flip-flop. Here, in this case, we have four SR flip-flop. This register will store a bit in each 
a flip flop as any register, but the Q and the Q bar outputs are connected to the SR inputs of a neighboring flip flop. Okay, you see this one connected back to here. So below is a four bit right rotate. It rotates the rightmost bit into the leftmost uh, flip flop. So one zero zero one becomes one one zero zero, and zero 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 one becomes one zero zero zero. Okay, so this example of shift and rotate register. And then we have another increment register. Okay, increment register is where you have 0, 0, 0, 0, go to 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 0, 1, 0, it increases the value by 1. So, JK flip-flop, okay, is like the SR flip-flop, except J equal 1 and K equal 1 flips the bit. Okay, flip-flop only change states on clock pass. So, in this case, JK flip-flop, okay, we use them so that we can uh, increment it according to the clock. Okay, so we use JK to implement an increment register. Increments the value store when it receives the increment signal and a clock pass. So if you look at, if you do programming, you click increase, like for example, you have a programming X++ in C++. Okay, so they will increment according to the signal when the clock comes in. And here is example of a register file. Okay. So the decoder accept here decoder a three bit register number from the control unit. Okay, this is where the address is. This along with the system clock selects the register. Okay, clocks will select the register. And the data bus is used for both input and output to the select register. Okay, data bus will pull come in into the selected register. Okay, data bus, sorry. Data bus will come in. So here is where the control unit works. Okay, and the control unit from the clock. We have clock input and enable uh, output, which is from the control unit. And then this is also a register number, also from the control unit. Okay, basically here is where you have the address of the register is. And this one is example of a four times three memory. Okay, means that this is, you have four bits, but you can store it in three location. Okay. So each of these containing 4 bit, 4 bit, 4 bit. And here is the line. And here is where you have the control that control which location should uh, increase, uh, should, should write the, uh, the data or not. Okay. So in case the clock is able, so write the neighbor, we decide which uh, flip flop to uh, store the data. And the data will be stored at those set of flip flop. Okay, so that's all for this final topic. Uh, not final topic, actually. This one is in chapter 7 topic. So hopefully you can do your, your lab task uh, properly according to this topic. So I, Dr. Sharif Fawzika Murzaman, okay, wish you uh, steady health, good health, okay, good fortune, and uh, hopefully you all stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys next time. So don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye.